Hi everybody, this is Karen Smith and we're going to talk about factoring. And we're going to start from the basics, of course. But um, we're going to work our way up to factoring trinomials and maybe even something a little larger than that. So um, put your seat belts on, get your pencil and paper out, and here we go. Let's talk about factoring. Okay, so you've seen the us talk about the greatest common factor amongst terms or amongst a group of numbers that's defined. So what this is is just that largest number that'll divide evenly into these numbers, okay? In other words, this number is a common factor, right? This number times something else will make that number, right? It's a common factor to each of the items that we're comparing. So the best way to understand it even better is to have an example. So let's check it out. Let's find the GCF, the greatest common factor of 18 and 36. Now where do we begin? We begin by breaking these numbers down into their factors so that we can see which ones they have in common, right? Common factor. Okay. And so what we're going to do is a factor tree for each of them. So um, you don't have to do a factor tree. You can just list them out. But the reason I like to show you guys how to do the factor tree, and I'm only going to do one of these with the factor tree. I'll list the rest out. It's just to show you how to do it right now. If you, you guys already know how to do factor tree, you can just fast forward to the next part. But begin by splitting it in half. Start with two times, and we'll have nine, right? We can still break that 9 down, so we bring the 2 again to another level. The 9 gets broken up, okay? Well, it can't get divided by 2, so we go up to 3. So 3 times 3. And look at this. When you get to a level where you have all prime factors, right? So note, these are all prime on this level, right? When you get there, stop, okay? And that's going to be your prime factorization. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Now, a factor tree like this is really for your scratch paper, okay? It's for your scratch work. You take the factorization that you come up with and transpose it to your page if you're asked for that. So at any rate, the uh, 36 then, here's one other way to do it. You can always, again, start with 2. 2 times what makes 36? What? 18? Good. So you write your 18, okay? Come another step. It's just like the factor tree, except you're writing equal steps, okay? Again, this is even, so we can say 2 times 9, right? Or 2 times 2 times, and then 9 gets broken into 3 and 3. So here's 36. Okay, so which items do these guys have in common? Let's look. Okay, so what I've done here is I've just put the prime factorization only next to one another because what I want to show you guys is I'm just going to draw a line between the common factors one for one. So we have two, okay, um, the next here, this one goes to three, so I'm going to have a three and I'll have another three, okay? If they match one for one, these are the things that they have in common. So then, if we take just those factors, okay, we can find the GCF. So we'll take one of the twos, we'll take a three, and a three. So what, six times three is 18? That means 18 is our greatest common factor of 18 and 36. Okay? Oftentimes, you'll find that the GCF is one of the numbers that is in question. All right, let's go to another example. This is how we do the numbers, okay? Now, what if we have variables involved? So now let's find the GCF of 21a cubed b squared and 28a squared b squared c. Okay, let's do something similar than to that we, you know, similar to what we've done before. Let's take each one and we'll write it out in just its factors, its bare factors, prime factors. And I'm going to include the variables on this one just to show you the point on what that I'm trying to make on how to find their GCF. OK, 
Okay, so again, now I'm going to take another color and I'm going to match these guys up factor for factor, whatever they have in common. Do they have any other threes? Is there a three in the other one that I can see? I'm here. Is there a three in the second one that I can match it up with? No, there's nothing. Is there a two in the first one? No, okay. So we're not going to match that, but there are seven. So draw the line between for a seven. There's an A, there's an A. There's no A for this guy, right? That A is going to be by itself. This B has a pair, this B has a pair. Okay, so now let's take these common factors, right? We have this, 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 and this. These are going to be the factors, the prime factors of our greatest common factor. Okay, so now we can say the GCF of these two things would be 7, right, we have a 7, times A times A times B times B. Now let's multiply that up, or we get 7A squared B squared. Now let's go back up here to the top, okay, take a look at these examples we just looked at. And I want you to uh, to see, just kind of make an um, observation, okay? Let's just look at the A's. We have an A cubed, all right, let me thicken this up here. We have this A cubed to compare to this A squared, for example. Now, what do you do when they both have a variable, the same variable in common and different exponents, okay? Which exponent did we end up taking, the cube or the square? If you look down there at our answer, we ended up taking a squared. This is going to be your rule of thumb, okay? When all the terms that you're finding the GCF for, okay, when they all have a variable in common, When they all have that same variable, for example, these two have a and a to some power. So when we're trying to decide what the GCF is going to be, you're going to use the smallest exponent on a or what, on whatever that common variable is. Okay? So let's try one more. Okay, so this will be parts, different parts for this same problem here. First part is find the GCF of the polynomial's terms. Here's our polynomial, okay? It will be 4x to the 5th power y squared z minus 8x to the 4th power y cubed z plus 12x cubed y to the 4th power. Okay, so we have to go about finding the GCF, okay, carefully, okay? So let's find that. Now, I'm going to highlight the different things. We have this one, okay, or I'll just kind of underline with a highlight. We have the first term, which is the 4x to the 5th y squared z. We have the second term, which is minus or negative 8x to the 4th y cubed z. And then the third term is positive 12x cubed y to the fourth. Okay? So there are three different terms. So we need to find the GCF of all these three. Okay? So the next step, okay, we're going to first begin by finding the GCF of 4, 8, and 12. Okay, so GCF of 4, 8, and 12. Okay? <laughs> so, look at this. 4 actually divides evenly into 8 and 12, right? So, 4 will be the greatest common factor, okay? Now, let's take a look at the x's. Do they all have x? Yes, they do all have an x to some power, right? Which of out of 5, 4, and 3 is the smallest power, right? Well, x cubed would be our GCF for the X's, the X factors. Remember, we just said that we'll take the smaller of the exponents. Okay, the lowest exponent. 
all right as long as they all have the they're, they're all in common okay now they do all have y's okay they do all have y's and we have what we have a square a cube and a fourth power which one will we take we'll take the square right the first one the square is the smallest power okay so we'll have y squared will we have z we have a z in the first one a z in the second one but no z here right remember that no z so that is not included in our gcf okay if there's no z in one of them it's not a common factor for all three so we will not include it in our gcf okay so there you have it. The GCF of this polynomial would be 4x cubed y squared. Okay, done. So now what I want to do is I want to learn how to filter this thing out. Some, some, at some point or another before now, this number was distributed into some polynomial, right? This number, 4x cubed y squared, was a distribution problem and we want to figure out what was inside of the parentheses with this out in front that's basically what factoring out the GCF is okay and so let me show you what I'm talking about okay okay so the directions read factor 4x cubed y squared that's the GCF right from this polynomial from part a okay so let me rewrite this okay what they want us to do, okay, what you'll be faced with is you'll be given polynomials, okay? So, for example, you'll have 4x to the 5th, y squared, z minus 8, x to the 4th, y cubed, z, plus 12x cubed, y to the 4th. And they're not all this mangly and ugly, but this is a great example to cut your teeth on. So, okay, so this at one point would have had this preceding it right as like say a multiplication problem 4x cubed y squared times some leftover polynomial right so um let's see what would i have multiplied times the 4x cubed y squared what is the number that i would have multiplied times this guy to get this first term right well four times four times one would give me four right okay so we'll include a one we'll clean this up after what about the X is X cubed times what would give me X fifth to the fifth X squared right so X cubed times X squared would give me X to the fifth so I'm gonna have an X squared in there Okay, I'm factoring out these these factors from each term. And that's what's happening. The y squared. So from here, I'm going to actually filter that y squared out, right? So it's not going to be in there yet. And there will be a z that stays in there. So now I want to factor the 4x cubed y squared from the middle term here, okay? Put your sign, minus sign there. 4 times what was 8? Well, 4 times 2, right? x cubed times what was x to the 4th? Single x, right? x to the 1 power. Okay, remember if you multiply x cubed times x to the 1st power, it's x to the 3 plus 1. So x to the 4th. So as long as it multiplies back up, you're doing this right. Okay, and of course, what about my y's? I had what times y squared would give me y cubed? Well, another y, y to the 1st. And of course, again, in this second term, as I have a z. Okay, so the z is there. All right, last term here. Let's factor it out from the 12x cubed y to the fourth. Now that plus sign stays, okay, for now. Okay, so 4 times 3 would give me 12. So I filter that 4 out of the 12 and I get a 3. Okay, so x cubed, right? x cubed filtered out of x cubed is going to leave me with 1. So that's not there yet. Okay, y squared times another y squared would give me y to the 4th. There's no z in that one, so there's no z in there. 
So this, let's write it out nice looking now. Um, cleaning it up. A factored, this polynomial with the GCF factored out of it would look like this. Here's our GCF written out front. Okay, and the leftovers, the, fil the filtered version of the polynomial, right, where we have that GCF filtered or factored out is written in parentheses. I refer to this as the leftovers um, when, a lot of times when I'm teaching. So if you hear me talking about the leftover portion of the leftovers, it's this part that's hanging off the end. Okay, so congratulations you guys, you have factored your first polynomial. Okay, so this is the very first thing too. Whenever we get into, clo you know, into more advanced uh, techniques and skills, we're always going to, you know, of course, there's steps we follow, right, to make sure something's factored completely. The very first steps when you're given a polynomial, when you, you've, the first thing you want to do is, okay, this. You always want to begin factoring by making sure you have descending order, right? Descending order looks like this, x to the fourth, Right, or let's just say this, ax to the fourth plus bx to the cubed, etc., etc. You have that countdown, right? c to the x squared, and then, and so on and so forth. Oops, let's put plus c, well, plus e. Well, that'll be fine. Okay? You just want to have that countdown of your exponents. All right? So that's what it is there. And look, we could actually do this. This is x to the first. This could be x to the zero power, right? Because that is what? One. As long as x itself is not equal to zero, anything to the zero power there is one. Okay. So that's just the very basic idea how to get started with your factors and your factoring, okay? So if you're not used to prime factorization, definitely practice it, okay? Fair warning, you guys. Factoring is an important skill. Take the time right now to master this skill because factoring in your future assignments is going to be a featured key step in completing those future assignments. Right now, while we're studying factoring, I need you guys to ask the questions if you need to and come and sit with me in the office Come have a meeting with me and let me help you if you need the help. Let's move on. Okay, so we're being asked in this problem to factor out the GCF from 8x cubed plus 4x squared plus 2x. So the first thing you're going to want to do is write down the GCF out in front, right? Then you open a set of parentheses. So what is that GCF for this? We want to know what's the greatest common factor of, let's see, of 8x squared, 8x cubed, excuse me, 4x squared, and 2x. Okay, so definitely 2 is part of that, right? The GCF here would be 2, and then out of x cubed, x squared, and x to the first power, we want to choose x to the lowest exponent, and that's x to the first. So it looks like 2x is what's going to be filtered or factored out. So let's filter out the 2x and see what's left over. So you ask yourself, 2x times what would have given me 8x cubed? Well, 2 times 4 would give me the 8. Okay, remember this is a 1 in my GCF. So x to the first times x squared would have given me the x cubed. And then move on to the next term, 4x squared now. Let's filter 2x from 4x squared here. 2 times 2 would have given me 4, and then x times x would have given me x squared. Now here's the dilemma here. We're filtering 2x from the 2x. In other words, what is 2x divided by 2x, you guys? Don't be afraid to put 1. 2x times 1 would give me 2x, right? Many times students get afraid to write a 1 or a 0 when we need it, you know, when it's time. Don't be afraid to do that, you guys. You need to filter completely. If there are three terms in your original polynomial and you're just factoring out a GCF, you should have three terms in your leftovers, 1, 2, 3. And this is our answer, by the way. So 
here we are. Good job. So this basically, this is factoring out a GCF. And okay, we'll move on from here. Okay, factor out the GCF. In this particular problem, our greatest common factor will actually be a binomial. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If we look at this binom this polynomial, we have it's written as having two terms, first term and second term. And so we want to know what the greatest common factor amongst these terms are. So what I'm trying to show you is that each of these has a common binomial factor of x plus 3. So this is totally possible. And you'll handle it very similarly to the way you handled the previous problems. You'll write it out front. It's We're factoring out x plus 3. And then you'll open a set of parentheses, right? This should be multiplication between these two sets of parentheses. From the first term, when we filter out or factor out x plus 3, what's left is x squared. So we write it down. From the second term, when we factor out x plus 3, what's left is plus 5. So we write that down. Okay? And then this is our factored polynomial. This is our factorization. So you will handle binomial, two-termed, right? Two-termed binomial factors very similar to this each time you find them, okay? So what do we call this? Common binomial factors. So now I'm going to talk to you guys about factoring a polynomial with four terms using grouping. Okay, the skill of grouping. I want you guys to consider this polynomial here, okay? Let's take a look here. Okay, we have x cubed plus 7x squared plus 2x plus 14. Take a look at 14 there. 14 has no x, okay? Also, the numerical part, the coefficients, do not have a common factor. They don't all share a common factor. In other words, in order for us to factor to the front, a, a monomial factor is what I mean, like in the previous examples, we would all need to have at least something in common for every one of the terms, all four of them. Now you can take a couple of them and they're something in common, you know, which is good for grouping. So since we don't have that common, greatest common factor to factor out to the front of the polynomial, the good part is that there's an even number of factors in this, in, excuse me, even number of terms. In this case, we have four terms. So we can use what's called grouping. Here are the steps. So the first step in grouping would be to use parentheses to group the first two terms and the second two terms. Okay, and here's what that step looks like. So we'll put parentheses around x cubed plus 7x squared. Always want to have a plus in the middle of those parentheses, okay? Always a plus. I'll explain that in a little bit. And then we group the second two terms with a set of parentheses. So now we have our groupings. This is why we call it grouping. Now for each group, here's our first group of parentheses, right? Our first set of parentheses. We want to look for a GCF. Now consider x cubed and then 7x squared. These guys have what? They have x squared in common. So this is the GCF for the first set of parentheses or our first grouping. So we have x squared. When we factor an x squared out of those, this binomial, what we have left would be what? x plus 7. Okay, now we'll do the same thing for the second grouping here. 2x plus 14 What's the GCF of 2x and 14? That would be a 2. And so once we factor out that 2, what's left is what? x. 2 times 7 was 14. So 
plus 7. Okay, now if you are paying attention for the previous example, this should really start looking familiar as far as that was concerned. If you look back, remember we had what were called common binomial factors. Remember that? At this point, if you're going to have a common binomial factor, it should be showing up. Okay? And so that brings us to step three. And now in step three, we're going to go ahead and factor out that common binomial factor. Just like we did in that previous example, x plus 7 is what is in common for each of the one, two terms, right? So if I factor or filter out x plus 7, what's left over? x squared, right? And then plus 2. So x squared plus 2. And we're done. Check your leftovers here. These guys, this is not factorable, right? There's nothing else I can do to this one. Now, that's not to say in another example you may be able to go further with your factoring. Always consider that option as you learn more factoring skills. Factoring completely is going to be a set of directions that we're going to always have to deal with once we get a little more into factoring. Okay, so we are being asked to factor using grouping here. Now, I want to recall earlier I said between our sets of grouping, our sets of parentheses, I said you had wanted to have parent you wanted to have a plus sign between our two groupings. This is very important for you to remember, okay? So, um here's how we accomplish that, okay? Notice I have subtraction in the middle here, okay? So this could kind of cause a little trouble, but it doesn't have to. If you remember that subtraction is actually adding the opposite, right? You could think of subtraction as plus negative, right? And that little tiny fact will help us get our plus sign in the middle, always plus. Okay, so we always want plus between those groups. Let's go ahead and fill in our groups now, okay? The first grouping will be 3x squared plus xy plus in the middle, right? Negative 12x minus 4y. Notice the minus in front of the 4y did not change. For that matter, neither did that middle term sign, okay? Subtracting 12x and adding the opposite of 12x is actually the same thing. So no signs have changed here. Oh, I forgot my x here. No signs have changed, okay? We merely changed, we merely looked at subtraction as adding a negative to help us accomplish our grouping, okay? So remember that. Okay, so from the first grouping, let's look for a GCF, okay? And so I'm going to help you to deal with that subtract, that addition in the middle in a sec. But let's get the GCF out of this first group, okay? So right here, out of 3x squared and xy, what would that common factor be? Just x, right? They both have a single x in common. So let's filter out an x. We'll have a 3x, right, once we factor one of these x's out. And this single x will come out, so we'll have plus y. Close parentheses. Now, remember we talked about having a positive leading coefficient. Remember now, we would still want that here too. So what we have in here is a negative leading coefficient. So we're going to have to factor out a, po a, a negative something. In this case, 12 and 4 have 4 in common. And then the variable ending is just an x and then a y, so that's about it. We're going to factor out a negative 4 from this second grouping. Be careful, when you factor out a negative, it's the same as if you distribute in a negative. All the signs of every term will change, so this guy is going to change, and this sign will change. So instead of having two negatives, we'll have two positives. So let's factor out negative 4. 
So negative 4 times 3x would give me the negative 12x I, I need. Okay, negative 4 times y, let's see, it'll be, yeah, okay, so we'll have the positive y. Good job, y'all. And notice by changing both the signs, look what we did. We made our binomials match, okay? Okay, here's our answer, and let's go on. Okay, so how can I check these answers that I've gotten? Let's rewind, go all the way back. It's the beginning of our video. Um, well, the first factoring example that we had, okay? So, for example, first we had this one. And I asked you to factor the GCF from this polynomial. If we go ahead and we would distribute that GCF back into, multiply it back up, since factoring undoes multiplication, right? It writes everything out in its bare factors, right? Prime factors. Then, then we can just do the opposite thing, right? We can invert that operation. Factoring undoes multiplication. Multiplication should undo or bring us back to the beginning of factoring. So let's multiply this up, okay? So to check your factoring, okay? by multiplying back up, okay? So what happens here, we'll have 4x to the fifth, okay, that's right, y squared, z, then we'll have what, minus 8x to the fourth, y cubed, z, okay? And then we'll have 12x cubed, y to the fourth, that checks out. And then let's see, let's try one right here. Okay, so look, let's check out, let's check this one, okay? So we want to check the factorization. Here's what this looks like. 2x, this is our answer, right? Our, our factorization looks like this. So without looking at what you're supposed to have, don't look at the beginning problem, you know, you don't want to look at the um, original problem. You want to just kind of simply multiply it back up, okay, on your, on the side without looking, then look afterwards. So at 2 times 4 is 8, x times x squared, x cubed, okay, so then we have what, plus 4, x and x is x squared, 2x times 1 is 2x, then go compare it, then you can look to see if you got each term correct as far as your factorization is concerned. So this is the correct factorization, is correct. Okay, let's check this common binomial factor problem here. Okay, so to check this one, since it's two binomials, I'm going to come to the bottom right hand of the screen, bottom right hand side of the screen. I'm going to check it by foiling two binomials that are multiplied. So x plus 3 and then x squared plus 5 is our factorization. Okay, again, two binomials being multiplied, we're going to FOIL. So x times x squared, that would give me x cubed, okay? Then outer, let's see, 5x plus 5x, inner, 3x squared plus 3x squared, and last, plus 15, Okay, and so let's go ahead and watch. I'm going to show you a trick on this one too in a sec. Let's see. Let's go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead and do your, um, put it into descending order first. Okay, so let's do that. X cubed plus 3x squared plus 5x plus 15. And now what we're going to do is just... We're going to go ahead and, since the problem, the original problem is got, it has that first step of grouping done, we'll go ahead and group it. We have the plus in the middle. Go ahead and factor out the GCF from the first grouping. We have the x squared giving us x plus 3. Now look what's happening. Then we have the 5 for this GCF is giving us x plus 3. Now look at the problem. 
So look, it does check out. There is an equivalent version of the problem. So it does check, okay? So um, going on to the next one. Now this one should come out almost, you know, we shouldn't have to do that extra regrouping, you know, working it back up. So to check this one, we'll FOIL x plus 7, x squared plus 2 similarly, and it should work out. Don't forget to put it into descending order like the original problem is, okay? I think you guys can handle this one, but remember to check factoring, we just multiply, and so, and vice versa. Okay, you guys, um, we'll have part two of the factoring series coming up shortly, so this is the end of the video, part one for factoring. Have a great day.